Um, sort of as I say, you know, going out, get, going, going to a fight on the night of a fight, um, it, 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 it's all done. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. It's just getting everybody to the, you know, getting everybody to weigh in, make sure everybody's fit, make sure everybody feels okay about what they're doing, and uh, after that. It's, it, for me, that's all plain sailing. But then once the fight happens, you're sitting there as a fan. Yeah. Of course, yeah. What, what about venues, Frank? I mean, you know, people rave about American venues and they rave about the MGM and Madison Square Garden. But if you've been locked in at the MEM for Ricky Hatton or Jeff Lacey or at the old London Arena for Ben McClellan, uh, you know, I, I've, never, I've never had that overseas. Uh, no, can think, you think, think of anything like that? No, I think for an American experience, for me, you know, d doing the show, doing taking Naz over. You, I mean, you was yeah, there. Yeah, took the show over to Naz to fight um, Kevin Kelly yeah, at great. Madison Square Garden. I don't think any any uh, any Brit had ever put a show on there before. We went out there. It was, I think, it was about eight or ten days before Christmas. Everyone said we'd do our money. We weren't going to get supported. We had a we had a record um, take on the box office for a, yeah. for a featherweight fight, and it was so exciting. That was yeah, it great was for Americans. But having said that. Nothing beats uh, uh, you know. Nothing that beats British fans. Yeah, that's the you bottom know, line, really. Isn't that, it? Yeah. That's it. I mean, because they're they're, you know, they're, they're they're fans. They're, they're actual they're, fans. They're not people yeah, that have they're paid. They're emotional fans. and they follow their guys. It's like you know, it's a bit like football. Yeah, they're in there, and there are so many nights. I mean, uh, you know, you say uh, the, 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 I mean, Ben and McClellan was one of the most <sighs> magnificent and tragic nights. All in it's, one. It was from one end of the scale to the other. Yeah. In looking what happened, I mean, I, I come, you know, picks in journalists like you, McIlvenny, and people standing on their seats watching the yeah. fight, and and getting him so involved in it, and it, but it was brutal. It was, you know, and and it was, it had the most awful outcome, and that sort of is one memory, it's not a good memory, but yeah, that's one memory in, 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 in my mind. Um, you look at going to, you know, some great fights. That obviously, we talk about the York halls, but the, mm. you know. Kawasaki, Joe Kawasaki and Mikhail Kesler. Yeah, 50,000, uh, you know, 250,000. That was a fabulous yeah. event. And suddenly here's this guy, who, you know, in, in you know Joe Kawasaki in probably about four or five fights prior to that, couldn't capture the public's imagination. No. And here he was, you know, there, there's this huge, huge, huge sort of, sort of sway of emotion and, and probably, for me, one of these greatest performances and, 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 and you know, fa fabulous performance against a real... Mikhail Kesler at his prime has done a job on him. He, I, 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 I thought for me that's one of the best performances I've seen of a British boxer. Yeah, that was flawless, especially Bruno. When Bruno beating Bruno finally, you know, achieving but, his destiny and winning the world title. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask you about that because you know, you, you know, you took him to that one, and you, you know, it was lots of negotiations, and and it was a hard fight to make because obviously he had the Tyson weight in if he won. Um, d d does, d does something like that give you more satisfaction? You know, because you know that on paper, you know, a year out of there, that was a hard one to make. You made it happen. You got him into a situation, and he pulled it off just because obviously it was. I think there was a couple of the caveats there because first of all, that you know, Frank had had three attempts. Of course, yeah. Let's get that right. And I've got to tell you something. He was in an era of good fighters. Damn right. But Frank was, Bruno was. was around today, and you know, and I was a bit of a critic of him when he was younger. But I've got to tell you something. He was around today. You know, he would be top of the pile with all these guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I really do believe that. He never got the credit. I mean, you think about him in Wales, uh, and it wasn't my promotion, when he was in Wales and he's fighting Lennox Lewis. He was beating Wale yeah. Lennox Lewis. He was jabbing him, beating and hurt him in the third round yeah. until he got clipped himself. You know, he never get, got the credit for it. But that night was his night. He'd done something he hadn't done in any other fight. He managed to keep his, you know, the, 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 the stamina thing was always a problem, mm. that he ran out of gas at the end of the round. I remember George, the late George Francis and I talking about it and saying, look, you know, Oliver McCall, we went out to see him fight against uh, Larry Holmes. We did, and yeah. Larry Holmes, who was one of the best trombone players ever, with that fantastic jab yeah, of his. Yeah. You know, that was the key to it. And Frank went out, set the pace, got behind the jab for his great, great long shots. And as the fight went on, it got, you know, obviously he got a bit tired because of the pace of the fight and... and you know, Oliver McCall who beat the man. He knocked out Oliver. He locked, knocked out Lennox Lewis. He a year beat earlier, the man yeah. who beat the man. Yeah. He was in there. So he was losing a lot of heart and suddenly the last sort of things about the tenth round up to the twelfth round. In you know, he, he he suddenly started. He was thinking he could get back in the fight and hang on in there, Frank. Mm. And he'd done things that he hadn't done in previous fights, which actually was to was to claim hold of the guy, stop him from working inside, and eventually capture the title. Yeah, and for me. Doing that in front of the, you know, in those days, the old cartel in their venue, which I could never get a look in at, 
at Wembley. It was just fabulous. And it, it was a fabulous night. I, I, I thought that was a very satisfying night. And I was really thrilled for Frank because I think he deserved it because he proved, as far as a boxer is concerned, what you might not have in natural ability, you can make up with hard work, determination, and uh, you know, uh, and desire. And he did it that night, and I was, I was thrilled for him. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, it's the whole thing about taking someone like that and nearly and uh, and you know people, a guy that's fouled in the past hasn't been there before that you know th that that to me i could sort of sense that night it was a real it was it was an absolute celebration in many ways wasn't it that night frank frank let me ask you about a little fella little naz okay um he's, he's back working with you now yeah I mean, well in know, some in some sort of capacity yeah, 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 well, he's, he's managed he's managing He's managing uh, Callum, and, and and the bottom line of all is, is that as far as you know, him and I've been obviously I don't know you know, but for quite a few years we've been talking. It's now. been pure, it's it was a up shame what happened because I had some of my, I thought he was the most uh, that for me was my most enjoyable moments in promoting a fighter because he was he got it he understood it he, you know he, he was a promoter's dream and the, you either loved it he was like the marmite of boxing you yeah. either loved him or you hated him but the youngsters loved him it, it was attracted a new audience fabulous um, ratings we got for fights he was exciting you never see him in a dull fight there was something and he fought good fighters that. frank he still fought good fighters yeah, really fought, good fighters. Uh, yeah, do you know something and, uh, and it annoys me i read some of his stuff about guys and they talk about his arrogance and they talk about um you know um him so sort of not 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 sort of showing opponents respect and and there was this for some stupid reason comparison with Ali who, who <laughs> we all know so shows some serious dis disrespect to fighters over Good the you. years you know calling them Uncle Tom's and so forth but the bottom line was that with, with Naz you know he he had this he had this great great natural ability and unfortunately what happened was as as his career developed and as it went on. You know, his family got involved, and for me, that wasn't a good, good thing. No. Never, um, it never is, is it? Never, you know, I don't. In some cases, it might work, but you know, I think uh, you know, on the sidelines, but never once. once 90, not, yeah, ninety times out of ten, it yeah. doesn't. You know, and then what happened was that you know he never fulfilled his true, true potential. He beat every every single super featherweight champion, and contrary to what I read again with some you know some journalists some you know respected so called respected or, or sorry I didn't say so called some respected boxing journalists he wanted and I tried desperately to make him against Barrera yeah. and we sat at ringside when Barrera for Junior Jones and got knocked out and I, said, and I remember sitting there before the fight I said let me tell you something I said this guy you catch him with, he's yep. open the right hand and that's what happened to him on the night well, and, and they did and I tell you Barrera, Barrera had wouldn't a, have had, it had, had, no, he had a great handler at the time. He, he may not have served him well in business from the business point of view. But he stopped him getting like, bashed up. He stopped. He stopped yeah. him fighting Naz, and his name was uh, Mal, uh, Ricardo Maldonado. Maldonado, he yeah. He's a great judge, but but stopped him from fighting. Yeah. And Naz would have beaten him, and I got he just never achieved his true potential, which he should have done because he was, Naz could have been the best of all of them. That, in my opinion, without a doubt. Yeah, listen, we, you and I share that, son, without a doubt. Listen, Frank, it's been a pleasure getting you on and I still want to plan in the new year maybe we'll sit down and we'll do a big look at what's coming up next year but I'm absolutely out of time Frank Warren thanks for joining us on the Boxing Hour on BBC